the Airbus A380 is dead. At least that's what the aviation world decided when Airbus shut down production in 2021. But one airline didn't get the memo. Emirates, the world's biggest A380 operator, isn't just keeping theirs alive, they're growing the fleet. Right now, they operate 95 to 96 active A380s, but by the end of 2026, they're pushing that number to 110 aircraft, almost their all-time peak. Almost. They're retrofitting them, installing Starlink Wi-Fi, upgrading cabins, preparing to fly them well into the 2040s. Meanwhile, other airlines, Lufthansa, British Airways, Qantas, have quietly reactivated their A380s, not out of nostalgia, but necessity, because slot constraints are getting worse, not better, exactly the problem the A380 was built to solve. So, if the rest of the world abandoned the Super Jumbo, why is Emirates doubling down on it? Why are they committing billions to a type everyone else gave up on? Let's start with the numbers because they are staggering. Emirates has had 123 A380s. That's nearly half of every A380 ever built. Right now, 95 to 96 are flying, another 24 to 25 are in storage or undergoing heavy maintenance. By the end of 2026, Emirates plans to have up to 110 active. No other airline comes close. The A380 failed for Airbus. For Emirates, they generate huge revenue on trunk routes. British Airways has 12, Lufthansa has 8, Singapore Airlines has 12, Qantas has 10, Korean Air has 10, ANA has just 3. Emirates alone controls more A380 capacity than the rest of the world combined. As of late 2025, Emirates A380's book looks like this. 123 that it had, 93 active, 23 in storage, 7 parted out or retired. This isn't market dominance, this is a monopoly on super jumbo operations. But Emirates isn't just holding on to these aircraft, it's actively growing the operating fleet. And to understand why, we need to look at what expansion actually means. When Airbus stopped building A380s four years ago, Emirates is investing billions to upgrade their fleet and future-proof their operations for the next decade. And heading into the new year, it's not a bad time to future-proof your own skills too. That's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Brilliant isn't a platform with long lectures you'll never finish. It turns you into a better problem solver by getting you hands-on from the very first mistake. The best way to think about Brilliant is it can help you achieve and do things you didn't think were possible. What I love is how personal it feels. Brilliant adapts to your level, challenges you when you're ready, and gives you that gentle nudge when you're stuck. Every lesson is built around active problem solving, the same step-by-step -step reasoning real engineers and analysts use every day, so you actually learn by doing, not memorizing. It helps you unlock the ability you already have. I've been diving into their proportional reasoning course, and it's fantastic for understanding the kind of trade-off analysis airlines obsess over. Fuel, weight, range, cost, the whole lot. It really teaches you to think in systems rather than isolated facts. So, if you want to start the new year with a serious learning goal, head to brilliant.org slash plain curious or scan the QR code to try it for free. You will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription where you'll get unlimited daily access to everything. Now, back to the video. So, what does expanding the A380 fleet actually mean when new aircraft don't exist? Emirates is doing something smarter than buying new planes. It's pulling 16 A380s out of long-term storage and putting them back into service. These aren't museum pieces, they're revenue-generating aircraft that were parked during the pandemic and never brought back online. To make this work, Emirates extended its engine supply contract with Rolls-Royce into the 2040s. It's even building a new in-house engine facility in Dubai to handle maintenance itself. Beyond reactivations, Emirates committed $5 billion to retrofit 219 aircraft, 110 A380s, and 109 Boeing 777s. This $5 billion program covers 219 aircraft. Each A380 spends about 22 days in the hangar, letting Emirates cycle through many aircraft per year. 
This level of vertical integration gives them total control over quality, timelines, and costs. The technology upgrades are where things get interesting. Starlink Wi-Fi is rolling out across the entire A380 fleet, starting early 2026, delivering ground-level internet to passengers at 38,000 feet. It's also installing Panasonic's Astrova system with 4K OLED screens, USB-C charging at every seat, and other amenities. It future-proofs cabins too, same business class as A350s, keeping the branding consistent. Then there's the new business class. 60 A380s are getting Safran's S lounge seats, the same ones flying on Emirates A350s. These aren't revolutionary, but they don't need to be. Its A380 halo effect does the heavy lifting. Passengers book Emirates because of the A380 experience itself. The A380 retrofit gives Emirates what is essentially a new fleet for the 2030s. The return on investment is significant. But retrofits and reactivations, they're only part of the story. Emirates isn't just reactivating stored aircraft, it's buying aircraft that it had leased from aircraft lessers. In 2025, Emirates purchased four A380s from Doric Nimrod Air 3 for $180 million total. That's $45 million per aircraft. For context, these planes were originally listed at $450 million, with discounts, of course. At $45 million for 500-plus seats, it's a steal, less than some airlines pay for a single A321neo, and far below new twinjet per seat costs. Emirates already leased them, but now they own them outright. Then there's the Stratos deal. Monaco-based Stratos agreed to sell MSN 190 to Emirates when its lease ends in 2027. That's A6EOO, an aircraft that's been flying for Emirates since 2015. Why is Emirates doing this? Control. Owning these aircraft means Emirates controls the retrofit pipeline. It decides when planes get upgraded. It manages the parts supply. It dictates maintenance schedules. No other airline on Earth is buying used A380s. Everyone else is retiring them or trying to offload them. Emirates is consolidating the global A380 supply, not letting go of airframes it has leased. Emirates is eliminating any chance of another carrier rebuilding serious A380 capacity, a true monopoly move. This isn't preservation, this is a strategic acquisition. But the question remains, why now? Why is Emirates betting billions on aircraft the rest of the industry gave up on? There are four reasons, and the first one explains everything. Slot constraints are getting worse, and this is driving everything. Heathrow, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, Paris, airlines cannot add more flights. Slots are maxed out. If you can't increase frequency, you upgrade. And the A380 carries more passengers per slot than any other aircraft in the world. At Heathrow, Emirates operates six daily A380 flights to Dubai. That's over 2,900 passengers per day in one direction. A Boeing 787 carries 296 passengers in a typical two-class configuration. You'd need 10 787 flights to match the capacity of six A380s. 10 flights for six slots. The math is brutal, and it favors the Super Jumbo. Named trunks like DXB LHR, DXB SYD, DXB SIN, and DXB JFK are replaceable. Swap an A380 for a smaller widebody on DXB LHR, and you lose revenue or burn extra slots you don't have. The second reason compounds this problem the 777X delays. Emirates has 270 Boeing 777X aircraft on order. They were supposed to arrive in 2020, then 2025 then 2026, now 2027. Without the 777X, Emirates has a massive capacity gap. The A380 fills it perfectly. The third reason is pure economics. For $5 billion, Emirates gets 290 upgraded A380 and 777-300ER aircraft with new cabins. With these retrofits, Emirates can realistically operate the A380 into the 2040s. That's at least 15 more years of revenue from an aircraft that was supposed to be obsolete. And finally, Dubai's growth trajectory demands this. Dubai World Central, Al Maktoum International, is on track to become the world's biggest airport. To dominate transfer traffic at that scale, Emirates needs high-capacity aircraft now. 
The A380 provides instant scale that no other plane can match. Until DWC is fully online and the network re-optimized, the A380 is Emirates' only way to squeeze more passengers through DXB's finite slots. But do these reasons actually translate into profit? The A380 has the largest business class cabin in Emirates' fleet. On many routes, premium cabins alone make the flight profitable. Emirates A380 configurations range from 468 seats in their four-class layout to 615 seats in two-class. That's lower cost per seat than the 777 or A350 equivalents, especially on high-demand, slot-restricted routes. Think about Emirates hub model, UK, Europe, Australia. These are exactly the markets where the A380 excels. High passenger volumes, limited slots, and strong premium demand. On core A380 routes, load factors hit 85 to 90 percent, with premium cabins selling out in peaks. Premium seats alone often make the flight profitable. The retrofit program extends aircraft life without massive capital expenditure. $5 billion for 290 jets versus something like $20 billion for 40 new widebodies. Even if the A380 lags a 777 on cargo, extra premium and economy seats offset that on Emirates trunk routes. But it's not risk-free. Tightening noise and emissions rules, a global downturn hitting 500-seat fills, or part shortage could bite, despite local MRO capacity expansion. The A380's size allows Emirates to offer more premium seats per flight than any competitor, and those seats command higher yields than economy. Many travelers even shift dates or routes to snag an A380. Flying Emirates often means the super jumbo to them. That halo boosts Dubai's tourism, hotels, and global playground image. Value that doesn't hit the aircraft P&L, but pays off big. But there's a narrative out there that needs cleaning up. Let's address something directly, because there's a story floating around that Emirates is retiring A380s. They're not. Out of 123 A380s owned by Emirates, here's the actual breakdown. 123 owned, 95 to 96 active today, 25 to 28 being stored, 15 being reactivated, only around 7 have been permanently retired or parted out. By end 2026, Emirates will operate up to 110 A380s. That's more than at any point post-2020, more than the entire rest of the world combined. A few stored frames will become donor aircraft, cannibalized for parts to keep the fleet flying into the 2040s. This isn't a retirement phase, this is an expansion phase. The distinction matters because it signals where Emirates sees the future of long-haul aviation, at least through the end of this decade and well into the next. But Emirates knows the A380 can't fly forever, so what comes after? Emirates is already looking at what replaces the Super Jumbo, and none of the options actually exist yet. First, there's the Boeing 77710. This would be a stretch of the 7779, carrying somewhere between 450 to 480 seats. It's the closest thing to an A380 replacement in a twin-engine format. But it's theoretical. Boeing hasn't launched it. Boeing hasn't even confirmed it's begun studying it. Takeoff performance and engine specs are still unknown. Emirates is interested, but the aircraft doesn't exist. Then there's the Airbus A350-2000. This would carry 430 to 450 seats, more efficient than the 777 fully composite, powered by Trent XWB engines. Airbus confirmed it could study the A350-2000 too, but Airbus hasn't committed to building it. The business case just isn't there without a significant launch customer, and Emirates alone might not be enough. And then there's Tim Clark's A380 Neo Dream. He's pitched Airbus on this repeatedly. His vision? 25% cheaper to run, lighter wings, composite fuselage, Rolls-Royce ultrafan engines, delivering 25% better fuel efficiency than the current Trent 900s. So, Emirates A380 expansion buys time. Simple. It knows the next Super Jumbo won't arrive until the early to mid-2030s at the earliest. Reactivating stored aircraft and retrofitting the fleet extends its capacity bridge until new models arrive, whatever those models end up being. By the mid-2030s, many A380s and 777-300ERs will hit 20-plus years. So, replacements must enter service then, not just on paper. 
If neither OEM launches, Emirates has a problem. Let's zoom out and look at what Emirates is really doing here. No aircraft replaces the A380 today. The 7779 can't. The A380-1000 can't. The 78710 also can't. Nothing carries 500 people with Emirates' level of premium comfort and operational flexibility. That's not a criticism of those new aircraft. They are excellent at what they do, but they don't do what the A380 does. Dubai's hub model requires this kind of scale. Emirates plus Fly Dubai plus Dubai World Central equals the largest connecting hub on Earth. The A380 anchors this. It's about moving the right mix of people, premium passengers, connecting through Dubai to destinations across six continents. When people think of the A380, they think of Emirates. When people think of Emirates, they think of the A380. That brand association is worth billions. Emirates will fly the A380 longer than any other airline in history, and the next generation, whether it's the 77710 or the A350-2000, is still a decade away. The Super Jumbo era isn't ending, it's entering an Emirates-only second chapter. It is not sentimental about the A380, it is pragmatic. It makes money, it solves problems, it fits the network, and until something better comes along, it is all in. Hey, before you go, the YouTube algorithm thinks you're going to like this video next, so why not check it out?